Hello, everyone. Welcome into the very first installment of the Bomber Briefing, a special YouTube series featuring members of the Ithaca College Bombers football program. If we're going to start a new series to give you an inside look on what Ithaca College football is all about, then the first guest has to be the head coach of the Ithaca College Bombers, Dan Swanson. Dan, thank you for making some time for us, and I'm excited to chat with you. Oh, this is tremendous. I can't wait, Jake. So obviously these are unprecedented times for everyone right now. You know, you and I were joking off air. When was the last time that you haven't been doing something football related on a field in the fall? Just kind of take us through what day-to-day -day life is like for you right now. Yeah, I mean, going back, um, I just think my first year of playing football was in fourth grade um, for the, the Spring Branch Eagles. Um, and uh, just so you know, just because you're a Texas guy, uh, my first completion ever in fourth grade was to a Texas country music star, Richard O'Toole. Um, goes by Richard O'Toole. You can look him up. Went to Stratford with me, but he played tight end. It was like 24 tight end dump um, and hit him right in the chest. First completion ever as a quarterback in fourth grade. But um, this is really the first time, um, you know, I've not been involved in in, in football. So day-to-day uh, -day is, is very different. Um, it's been heavily in um, staying engaged with our players. Uh, and making sure um, that they're doing what they need to do in the classroom, um, staying up to date with as much football education as we can give them um, at this point in time. We're doing some great things like uh, bringing great alumni in to talk to them in different fields um, on Tuesday nights, which has been really good. We can, can still moving on with the leadership academy. So there's a lot going on in the football program, and our staff is still recruiting and working on some really big projects that we've just never really had the time to do that before. So what's it like for you, a football coach, always Saturdays in the fall, you know, you're coaching. Now you're at home and, and you're working on trying to homeschool your kids. You're working on trying to build the program. Just the, take us through the day-to-day the -day life of Coach Dan Swanstrom. Yeah, yeah. So right now um, our kids are at home um, until October 5th, and uh, they're going to go back to school on October 5th. But um, currently I'm running a, a third grade and a second grade class um, th virtually through the teachers. Um, my Eight-year-old is thriving. Um, he was built for on-campus schooling, um, and my uh, second grader is not built for it. I, I literally uh, catch her falling out of her seat, falling asleep, with just pure boredom. Um, so trying to keep them on task is certainly uh, a, a lot more work than I thought. You know, there's a lot of uh, <laughs> gratitude to the teachers and especially elementary teachers out there. I mean, I can't imagine having a room full of uh, eight-year-olds or um, six-year-olds, but uh, – um, so that's been unique. You know, the Saturdays up here in Ithaca has just been absolutely stunning, just perfect weather. It just kind of makes you um, a little bummed out when you're not playing, um, but it's good to see some games going on, flying around. And, um, you know, we've been fortunate that we've been able to host some recruits on campus. So the Saturdays have been um, really busy for us. And, and that, that it's just good to wake up with a full schedule and uh, it keep you motivated, keep you moving. It's just awesome. So looking forward now to what could potentially happen down the line, do you have a, a feel for what the spring could look like in regards to playing some games and, and obviously what the, the following fall would then look like? What kind of walk everyone listening, kind of what you know right now in regards to the future of the program as far as when we're, we're actually going to see the Bombers out there on the field again? Yeah, I think, uh, I, you know, I, I'm optimistic that we'll be back together in January um, completely as a program. Um, I think it will – uh, have the opportunity to train and, and practice and uh, have a productive spring. We don't know what the future looks like for games and stuff like that, but I know it's on the table and certainly has not been dismissed um, by our administration and the Liberty League. And we're just waiting for more information from them. And uh, we've already started working this week, um, moving full steam ahead with 2021 um, with, with some normalcy to 2021. So um, there's a lot to unpack. There's a lot of moving parts and um, a lot of different ways to prepare, but um, we, we will be ready. And I think the guys want to be back together and, and we can't wait for that moment. When you look at your team and the program you've been able to build, this would have been your fourth season. It's still your fourth season, just a little bit different than uh, the previous three, obviously. What to you has been yeah. your message to everyone involved in the Ithaca Obama program? Yeah, I, I think the best way to put it is, uh, um, we talk a lot, as weird as this sounds, about, um, um, you know, the Count of Monte Cristo, um, you know, uh, a book um, or some of the younger guys, maybe a movie and stuff like that. But when he gets falsely imprisoned um, for 14 years, 
uh, he could have just sat in a cell and um, just kind of led to his demise. But um, when he gets um, connected with the priest, um, the priest educates, educates him, um, teaches him how to use a sword. And basically the point is when he finally escapes from prison, he invested those 14 years um, to be basically become an, an elite citizen. Now, he was out for revenge. Um, I don't want to use revenge as like our deal, but the point is of the book is he invested his time over those 14 years. And uh, I don't expect to be in this situation for that long of a time. But the point is um, you can spend your time or you can invest your time. And, and like the count did when he was in prison for 14 years, he invested his time. You should do the same thing. Coach, what I love about you, and I've, I've gotten to know you over the last couple of years, is that when you came in and took the job, you came in head on. You know, you didn't look at previous records. You didn't look at whatever the perceived expectations were for the program. You came in and just did the work, and the team has had great results in each of your first three seasons coaching the team. What is it about you that you think relates so well to your current players and your former players? What is it about you that has allowed you to come in and, and have so much success early on? I really um, can't speak for our players, but I, I do know uh, I love our players and we we appreciate the work that they put in. And interesting, you know, the first three years, we just we really have not been a deep football team um, as far as depth. Um, you know, we've been very fortunate to to maintain a lot of health. Um, I do think we're very honest with our players. Uh, there's a ton of communication. You know, I think our coaching staff has more communication with its players about why. Um, what we're doing, how we're doing it, and what the purpose is behind what we're doing than maybe any other staff that I've been a part of. Um, and I think it helps the players understand um, clearly what we need from them, what their standards and what the expectations are from them. And, and really, you know, we're not a big yelling and screaming program. Obviously, there's moments and times where um, football is a, a physical sport where, you know, a little little extra fire goes a long way. But we do think um, by just explaining standards, expectations, and then coaching up to those standards and expectations it is really how we go about our business. And that's kind of how we define our coaching philosophy. Coach, let's do a bit of a, a rapid fire here so people can get to know you a little more and, and, and get a feel for what you're all about. Let's start with something that is very important to me when I was a student at Ithaca College, places to eat around, uh, around the, the city, around the community. What are some of your favorite spots uh, in, in Ithaca? Yeah, me and my wife um, love food and uh, very fortunate to get the job here at Ithaca. Um, I don't know how many students would be visiting the places that uh, we like to go, um, but our top couple spots, um, the Rook, um, which is which is downtown, great spot. The, one of the, the owners' uh, kids are the same age as our kids. They treat us really well. Amazing food. Um, and then Simeon's um, in, in downtown also. is we, we like to spend a lot of time at Simeon's. They, they treat us right and the food's amazing. And then uh, Gola, the Italian spot is just tremendous. And then obviously, you know, you got to go with the Yale house anytime you're um, hanging with other coaches or visiting coaches come in or, you know, uh, recruiting families. We always point them to the Yale house because you always know exactly that you're going to get a great meal. Absolutely. Could, couldn't have said it any better. How about your uh, your favorite spots on campus? If you're walking around, beautiful day, a, a nice you know afternoon in Ithaca, nothing better, especially during the fall, as you referenced. Where are some of your favorite spots to be checking checking out on campus? Number one spot is the bench um, right outside the Hill Center, above the fountains, over the lake. Um, that's the number one spot on campus. Number two spot um, on great days, even when I'm working, um, sometimes I'll go up in the stands um, kind of on the edge of the stand so you can see the lake, um, usually on a beautiful fall day. I did it earlier this week. It's just absolutely tremendous. Um, those spots are just one and two. The practice fields um, as you walk down, I think just amazing. And then uh, really nothing beats just a great fall day in Butterfield Stadium. Um, you know, 64 degrees with the visiting team coming in is just tremendous. And usually homecoming or uh, parents weekend with just a packed crowd. And obviously, you know, the Cortica jug, if it's at home, you know, that that packed house, those are those are just awesome spots. You brought it up. We have to end this by talking about the Cortica Jug because last year, as I'm sure many people watching this realized, the game took place at MetLife Stadium in front of a record-setting Division Three crowd. 
take us back to that moment in time. What was it like when you first found out this was a possibility, when you realized it was going to happen, and then just everything that went into that game? And obvious, obviously the most important thing as a Bomber fan here, Coach, you guys not only played well, but you played great and you got the victory. Yeah, I mean, what uh, I always love to say about this is um, with the help from our alumni and the support from our administration, um, from our president to our director of athletics to – the alumni who helped to support this. Um, there were so many times where people just could have said no, and it just would have been easy. Um, but I work for people who think big and want to put big things on. And uh, it was just awesome just going through that process with everybody. Um, obviously, it was a big deal um, for us, the alumni, the school. Obviously, the biggest day in Ithaca College history, um, having that many alum together it, on, on a day. It was just amazing. But uh, um, you know, it, it was a big event and, uh, you know, my my job was really to try to keep our program focused. But uh, I think everyone kind of knew throughout the process, you know, as the ticket sales open, you know, you sell 8000 tickets in an hour. You're like, OK, here we go. You know, and then the numbers just keep rolling in. And, you know, Ithaca, you know, you know, this there's there's a big media contingency at every single practice, you know, from from radio to TV um, uh, to, to the the paper, you know, there's a lot of people out there and, uh, you know, we weren't getting a ton of questions about our opponents week in and week out. We're getting a lot of questions about, um, you know, the, the game down in MetLife. So, you know, the, it was really a balance between keeping our team focused on what we were trying to accomplish and understanding that um, we were potentially going to play in the biggest game um, in our level's history. Now, Coach, you're too modest to say this, but before you took over, I think I had really struggled in that football game. I, I speak as an alum that we, we badly wanted to see some some Cortica Jug victories. You come in and you're 3-0 and in Cortica Jug. Just how special is it to be a part of that rivalry and get the opportunity, whether it's at MetLife or not, playing that type of atmosphere year in, year out? It's just so much fun. I, I don't know any other way to put it. It's just so much fun. I, we work so hard. Like, nobody works but you play college football. You, you work your tail off. You're working your tail off in the classroom. Uh, we work hard to be good at football and, and to get to, to go on the field and, and hear the roar of a crowd at that level and that magnitude every single year. Um, it just means so much to, to our players and the energy and excitement of, of playing in that game. And, uh, um, you know, certainly have had some success there, but they're a talented team. And I know um, we're going to have to be our best. Um, to beat them every single year, along with so many other of our, our great competition, which makes makes it so much fun. If it was easy, um, would it feel as good, you know? And that's what makes it so great is it's not easy. You know, we're playing great players, great talent, great coach teams. You know, I can't even tell you how well they've ranked in special teams every single year. So, um, you know, it's, it's just really fun. I'm just glad to be at a place that just embraces and loves uh, the game of football and celebrates it the way we do. Coach, this was a ton of fun. I hope everyone watching got a, a better idea on what you're all about, what the Ithaca Bombers program is all about. And, and obviously, it's an unprecedented time for everyone, but good times are ahead and certainly great times are ahead for the Ithaca Bomber program. Thanks, Jake. I appreciate it. And uh, thanks for helping us out. And uh, look forward to staying in touch with you. Go Bombers. Go Bombers.